Marfan syndrome is an uncommon disorder affecting perhaps one in every three or 4,000 people. And it is notable because it affects so many different parts of the body, particularly the skeleton, the muscles, the heart, the eyes, and the blood vessels, among other organs. It is classified as a connective tissue disorder, and it is due to the fact that there is one component of connective tissue that's abnormal. This is inherited as a genetic problem. It occurs uh, if you have one copy of two of an abnormal gene. If you have an abnormal copy, you can pass it to a child with a 50-50 chance so that we have many large families who have multiple people in multiple generations affected by Marfan syndrome. The most important aspect is the heart and the aorta because this is what can kill people if it's not managed appropriately. The largest blood vessel in the body, the aorta, enlarges over time and a split in the wall called a dissection can occur, and this is proportional to the size of the aorta. So one goal is to keep the aorta from enlarging. This is managed by doing routine imaging studies, such as uh, echocardiograms or CAT scans or MRI scans periodically over the life of a person. And gratifyingly, if the aorta enlarges to the point where we think it is dangerous, then it can be repaired. Cardiac surgeons are very effective these days in preventing dissection by replacing the portion of the aorta that's enlarged. We're also very excited about some trials of a new medication that potentially can dramatically improve not just the heart and aorta issues with Marfan syndrome, but some of the other problems as well, such as the skeleton and the, and the muscles and, and the curvature of the spine even. Uh, these trials are underway now. Uh, they need a lot of additional support to manage uh, the information that's coming out of them. It'll be another three years or so before we have definitive results. But if they prove to be as effective uh, in humans as they have been in experimental animals, then I think we will have made tremendous progress. It's very gratifying that in the 25 years that I've worked on Marfan syndrome, that the life expectancy of people with Marfan syndrome has actually increased 25 years. It used to be that people died in their 30s and 40s. Some very young children died, some older, but on average in the 30s and the 40s. Now, with proper management, which involves making the diagnosis early, following people, managing their lifestyle, giving them medications, doing cardiac surgery when it's appropriate, people have the expectation that they could well live a normal lifespan. I was diagnosed with Marfan syndrome uh, at nine years old in England. Um, I'd obviously had lots of, of the minor symptoms and signals over that time, and it took them a long time to diagnose me. I had my first surgeries when I was 12 and 13, and um, you know, I was definitely followed for Marfan syndrome from then on. You know, that wasn't without its complications about even just getting, say, a prescription for my eyes correct or finding out, you know, what I really needed to have done from a cardiac perspective and all of those things. So it was, it was, it's still a challenge. I'm typical in the sense that I have most of the major symptoms. I've had a lot of, you know, I've had three major heart surgeries. I have an artificial heart valve. I take blood thinners. I've had scoliosis surgery. I've had other major surgeries. You know, I'm, I have 10% vision without my contact lenses. I've got all the major things that affect your quality of life. Um, you know, I, I've been lucky that I've been treated for those um, proactively so that I didn't end up in an emergency situation, but there is still the ongoing possibility that, that I will um, for the rest of my aorta. And um, that, that's the scary part. That's the part that kind of keeps you awake, awake at night. I think I've made the most of my life um, with this, but it doesn't mean to say that I haven't dealt with the consequences. I can't have children because I'm too high, much high risk for um, carrying a pregnancy. I've got all those sort of social aspects to deal with. Um, so I think that, 
it's it's hard to generalize and say I am your typical person. I think it's a very individual disease um, and manifests itself in many different ways.